All right, well, both players are ready in the feature match area, so let's go ahead and head down there and see who takes it down between Dylan Ham and his opponent playing Hammer on your right. It's going to be Ham playing that Death Shadow deck on your left, the Hammer opponent. Looks like we're going to be on the play here for the Shadow deck. And a quick fetch. Don't know what this is going to be. It could be a threat or a discard spell. Depends on the texture of Dylan's hand. Not to be confused with Dylan's ham. <laughs> Although I guess if you had uh, a clone of, of Dylan, they would be the Dylan's ham. Get out. That was a joke for you, Ross. It was just for you. All right. Raghavan's a play for ham. A quick turn one hammer from Hirsch. Interesting play. You don't see that too often. And Ham going to find a hammer of his own off of the Raghavan. I doubt he'll play it. You need a lot of combinations of things uh, to want to play that hammer there. Yeah. Turn but one hammer suggests a um, Heroes to Paladin in hand. We do see one yeah. uh, off of the Stotsies. But early Raghavan, we've seen it run away in games earlier in this tournament. We know what this card can do. And uh, looking great here. Uh, a card that I think is very underrated in the Hammer matchup. Some lists play Memnite that can be awkward. Hirsch actually has zero. Uh, Raghavan often, you know, either can run away with the game if you uh, clear a path of removal or they don't have an early blocker. Yeah. It's also one of the best ways to force an early trade for Esper Sentinel. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I was actually about to say that Esper Sentinel is the card that I hate playing against the most when I'm playing a Raghavan. Yeah. But sometimes you just want to trade with that. Esper Sentinel without giving them a card or giving them an extra mana to slow yourself down, and Raghavan can do that. All right, no second land for Doneham, but with the cycle of the bobble, might find it. Also has the treasure at the ready from the Raghavan. And here, Max Hirsch going to play a Saga on turn two. You have to imagine Stoneforge Mystic is coming down yeah. now. Let's see what he goes and gets. And, uh, with these Sagas going around, you got to think the Stoneforge will definitely trade with the Raghavan and Ham ashore on mana, so... Uh, you don't want to go get Cauldra then in that spot, right? Yeah. Uh, get some Metal Sis. That's I a like solid that. one. Yeah, and that does allow for that trade next turn, which I do like. So I'm going to go back Ham's way. And now it's a question of whether Ham can keep clearing away for this Raghavan to get through uh, and maybe hit some land drops to start adding more pressure to this battlefield. Uh, a little bit of a different dynamic here in this game with Ham sort of taking the early initiative. Max Hirsch from the Azorius Hammer side having to take more of a defensive posture in the early turns. All right, Bolt takes care of the Stoneforge Mystic, and now Raghavan chunks in. That's two damage and a card off the top and a treasure. It's Esper Sentinel. That's a nice one. It'll draw a card off the Nettlesis next turn, too. And that one off a treasure. Ham does have a second land here in this watery grave. That shocks him down to 13, so we're, we're a little short of being able to start deploying Shadows. All right, we do deploy the Esper Sentinel. We're going to burn another bobble. We're going to take a peek at the top of Max's deck. And then we're going to pass and draw a card. The Watery Grave represents a couple different points of interaction. Perhaps something like Drown in the Lock, maybe a double combo, Fatal Push plus Bolt or something in case two creatures come down. We'll see if Max wants to just activate the Saga or if he wants to go ahead and jam that Nettle Cyst. I think you don't really want to play into the Sentinel, so an activation of the Saga makes a ton of sense. Max passes the turn back to Dylan. Yeah, just keep putting blockers in the way. All right, another thought sees, but this isn't going to stop the Saga activation. We're going to take the Nettle Cyst, leaving another Stoneforge Mystic. And now, if there is a removal spell in hand, an attack here makes a lot of sense. But do we attack with one or both? Ooh. Interesting to see no attack with the Sentinel. Yeah, maybe wanted to... Well, I, I'm not really sure. Attacking with Sentinel seemed automatic to me. If you yeah. have a removal spell for the, the token. Well, yeah. But if you don't, then they could just eat the Sentinel for free. Since ah, the so you're going for the trade creature. on purpose. Okay. Yeah. All right. Dylan Ham making a lot more sense now that... We see that. Maybe he's going to lead with another Raghavan here. Ooh, no follow-up play. Pass the turn back. Hirsch looking pretty good. He, he's got some things going. He's, these Urza Sagas are generating a lot of card advantage. He's got the board relatively stable. Uh, and he's got more in his hand to do. With the second Saga, you know, a few uh, land counts kind of high, but one of them is a Horizon Land as well. Okay. That can get cashed in for a card. So you're really seeing the power of the Hammer deck. He, he didn't have a very explosive start. Uh, but is able to grind through this stuff 
from Dylan Ham and play a more classic sort of attrition mid-range game. Uh, not something that you typically see out of decks that also have the capability of killing you on turn two. Right. No, Saga adds so much to these decks, right? Just like Saga plus Stoneforge Mystic not only give you just ways to use your mana, but they both just have an accelerated clock when you combine them with the rest of the game plan. You know, you have not only uh, like the hammers to go get with the Stoneforge Mystic, but you have, you know, things like Cauldron Complete or Nettle Sis, like we've seen. Uh, on top of that, it's it's just like, uh, you know, two cards that work flawlessly in the deck, but also can do their own thing. Yeah, they, they stand alone. All right. Urza Saga is the land drop for Hirsch. If he wants to play... Yeah, find some Force Mister. Nice. Find, find Spring Drum. Drum. So is able to sort of get that tempo boost by getting an extra mana there. That is a Drown in the Lock countering the Stoneforge Mystic, so no equipment could be found. Back Ham's way. Has the 1-1 one, one, uh, Esper Sentinel still that he stole? Yeah, but real other... Okay. Dash Fragman, we're going to get some more damage in. Now I'm looking at the top of the deck here in hopes that I find another threat. There is the third hammer. Mm -hmm. Casting it here doesn't make a lot of sense because you don't have the cigar to aid and you don't have any way to equip it. I thought I saw a lightning bolt in Ham's hand, in which case he might have wanted to bolt this uh, construct before Hirsch gets a chance to untap because there's three total artifacts in play. Well, maybe he's looking for the long game bolt face route. Or just wants to save it for a potentially more annoying creature. He does have pretty good information on what's in Hirsch's hand from those thought seizes. Yeah, not a whole lot of action from Hirsch. Looks like Ornithopter, yeah. maybe another Springleaf Drum. There's a Saga has enough action. That's true. Has a canopy as well, so we can bust that at some point and look for another threat. And now, you know, just playing out Artifacts this turn, play out Ornithopter, play out Drum... Play a land, make another construct. Suddenly, these constructs are gigantic. Yes. No, and I, I like your idea of just bolting the construct before it grows, because now it looks like it's going to be pretty problematic. Yeah. So you play the fourth artifact, and you know you can make a construct in response if there's any lightning bolt. <laughs> now, important to note, Max did not pay one for the Esper Sentinel, but it is Dylan's responsibility to announce the trigger. Uh, at some point, if it's caught, he may be able to put it on the stack, and then Max can pay for it. But at the moment. Uh, we're just going to go on. Contract coming in. We'll see if we want to make a contract five, here. 5-5 five right now. All right. Looks like we're going to yeah. bolt. There was a lightning bolt, and now the bolt has to target Ornithopter. Yeah. Which is much worse. All right. Just going to let it die. Could have made Springleaf Drum mana and then use Saga. Instead, going to take a damage from the canopy. Don't love that. Every life point matters here. But yeah. still putting a lot of pressure on to swing for five. Don't need a death, death shadow. shadow yeah. yeah, no kidding. Stress of iteration also good. Is that unholy heat? I assume we're delirious. Okay, so that'll deal with one of the constructs. And now, yeah, really punished for not using that lightning bolt. Could have been almost free. There's one more construct coming. I told you not quite correct. Dylan Ham did take a big chunk last turn from that elemental, so yeah. there's a or from the uh the construct, there's a chance that it's gonna be lethal without chumping with the Esper Sentinel. Yeah, we'll get life bills updated. Six life for Ham and eleven for Hirsch after that Ragavan came through. But we can get this uh construct up to okay, twelve and seven. No, six. Yeah, it was an attack for five last turn at yeah. 11, so that makes sense. Now, okay. we're going to make a construct. We get to sack the Saga and search. We have an Ornithopter drawn. We can crack the Horizon Canopy, draw a card, look for another artifact to play. A lot of it's, options here for me. We can also find a Ginger Brute. Ginger Brute's nice. Okay, Shadow, oh, Shadow Spear. Spear's nicer. <laughs> yeah, that's better. <laughs> All right. Fetch. Uh, got a removal spell. Okay. Hirsch is going for it. This will be a lethal attack if there is no fatal push from Ham. I have to imagine if there was a removal spell, it would have been cast yeah. last turn, but it, it looks like we're in the pack. All right, game one goes to Max Hirsch, and there you're seeing, honestly, just the strength of Urza Saga. One land able to generate those two large bodies and go find one of those artifacts, uh, you know, those powerful one and zero mana artifacts that you can tutor up. 
Yeah, and Ham had a solid start there, but none of his real heavy hitter cards to follow up. No iterations, no shadows, no breaches. Uh, and, uh, you know, wasn't able to leverage his removal spells against the power of Saga. Saga is so good against spot removal. It's also great against counter spells, and that's why you see Saga being such an important uh, method for beating things like Murktide Regent decks. But those decks also have just been adopting things like main deck dress down and sideboard engineer explosives so they're aware of their the the leak in their plan and they have ways to plug it but okay. saga obviously very good uh looking at sideboards a lot of interesting options for max hirsch i see two copies of draneth magistrate maybe you want that one to stop breach three copies of sanctifier is back that one helps you against breach to some extent and is also a very difficult uh threat to remove one burnt and forge tender is good against something, is not so good against push or drown, so I'm not a big fan. I do like this blacksmith skill. There are two of those in the main deck. I like the third one. Two March of Otherworldly Light and two Path Exile, if you want some removal spells for some of these big creatures. Uh, a fourth copy of Spell Pierce. I think Spell Pierce is what's going to be coming out in this matchup. Yeah. Uh, along with a Manriki Gusari, a Pithy Needle, and a Relic of Progenitus. Maybe you want the Relic as another way to, to help against Breach, and um, then you can eschew these Draineth Magistrates that are more for Cascade. But Sanctifier and Vec, good removal, another skill, and a relic. Really solid sideboard options here for Max Hirsch. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, Dylan is actually known for playing Murktide. Don't, don't quote me on that. I think Dylan's a Murktide guy. And so if you're Max and you've played against Dylan before, you might think to yourself, are they just a Murktide deck that's splashing black? Do they even have Death Shadow? Do they have any graveyard stuff at all? I don't know if Relic of Genesis is coming in, but you know maybe if he puts them on Grixis Murktide... Maybe it does, and then it ends up being splash damage. We'll have to wait and see how he wants a sideboard, though. Uh, Dylan Ham's sideboard, also uh, a lot of good options. Does have Gigantha as a companion. Two Unmoored Ego, not for this matchup. Two Terminate, I like, is just a flexible removal spell that can deal with a big creature. Uh, three Spell Pierce, not great. One on Licenser is not great, but here are the heavy hitters. Two Engineer Explosives, excellent against a deck that plays a lot of cheap permanents. Yeah. Two Dress Downs, very good for dealing with Saga Tokens. One copy of Alpine Moon that can just shut down Saga entirely. Love I love Alpine Moon in this format. Can also potentially shut down Inkmoth Nexus. Right. Uh, so um, options there. It does have a basic island in the Cyber 2, probably for Blood Moon decks. Uh, that's not going to be relevant here. But Engineered Explosives, Address Down, Alpine Moon, and Terminates all should be coming in. I imagine we'll be trimming on some of our discard spells. Uh, and maybe tr trimming on some of our threats. This is not a matchup really for Dragon's Rage Channeler. Right. You're going to try to become more of a control deck. You know, take control uh, with a lot of your card advantage, especially with Underworld Breach uh, and your quality removal. So I could definitely see DRC uh, hitting the bin along with some of these thought seasons. All right, well, we are getting ready here for game number two. We got Max Pile Shuffling to give his deck a little count. Just want everyone at home to know that Pile Shuffling is no longer considered deck randomization. It only counts as counting to make sure you have 60 cards and you're only allowed to do it once per game. Max Hirsch here shuffling up after the pile truffle. Dylan Ham playing that Grixis Shadow deck featuring Gigantha. What are your thoughts on Gigantha in the format? I think it's pretty good. Yeah. People should play it more often than they do. That's fair. Do you think it's worth just like bending your deck around sometimes and like not playing a Brazen Bar or, or... if it's only a couple cards, yes. Yeah, I agree. I've been really digging it in uh Pioneer with various is it decks I've been playing. There's not a whole oh, lot of double tips on the is it decks. Weird. What is, okay, Ross, what's <laughs> your deck in modern right now? It's just right now. Yeah, but it's got a bunch of damn steam <laughs> decks in it. And Spireball Canals. Yeah. All right, we're underway. Dylan Ham, no play on turn one. That is uncharacteristic for a shadow deck, but likely has instant speed removal. Yeah, got to expect a removal spell, but it could be push, it could be heat, it could be bolt. Yeah, and if I'm Max, I'm looking to play something on turn one that's not easy to kill, so Sigarda's Aid, Relic of Pretendus, S for Sentinel. We do see both of those cards in Max's hand, I believe. The Relic is for sure there, but I thought I saw two aids actually in the middle of his hand. All right, we're going to fetch basic planes, maybe... Fearing Blood Moon? Maybe just doesn't want to take damage because there's no more spell pierces in the deck. Yeah. I did get a quick peek at the sideboard options from Hirsch. Looks like he sided out Ornithopter, Springleaf Drum. Uh, okay. Left the Draft Magistrates, didn't bother bringing those in. Siding out Ornithopter Drum also makes sense. They're kind of low-impact cards. I, I can buy that. Yeah, you need a lot more cards that are just good on their own instead of yeah. cards that require multiple pieces. It's That's how you get a leg up when you're playing a disruptive strategy. 
you know, you just uh, break up one half of the two card combos and then the other half doesn't do anything. So, Relic does come down for Hirsch, so no going on the removal spell for Ham. Um, I think I do see those two aids, and no notably, you might think the second aid is unnecessary, but against decks with a lot of spot removal, it can be good. If you have multiple creatures in play, you know, you can uh, target both and you can choose not to uh, equip it when it goes to resolve. So if they kill the first target response, then the second trigger lets you still equip to the other creature that you have. All right, well, we have a lot of stuff coming from Max, but nothing super impactful other than an Urza Saga. We have Springleaf Drum, Cigar Desade, and Relic of Progenitus. Uh, Dylan Ham missed the connive here off the Ledger Shredder. Important to note, all these yeah. abilities are the owner's responsibility. I'm guessing that that drum is a singleton left in the deck as a tutor target for Urza Saga if you Likely. need it. Just happen to draw it. And yeah, a, uh, a hand with no real threats for her outside of this Saga. So... Another slow, plotting kind of hand, but Saga and Sagarda's Aid will set it up eventually. Okay, decides to kill the hammer and has the Alpine Moon. That's going to blow up the Urza Saga and all future Sagas and Max Hirsch's. How his strength is completely diminished after this play. Yeah, really nothing going at this point. We're probably going to have to see this Relic get sacrificed to draw a card just to dig for some action. And Max kind of sadly puts the Urza Saga yeah. into the graveyard. And now Dylan Ham going to fetch, has another play, it seems. This fetch shock, I think it might be Death Shadow time. Discards address down to the Ledger Shredder Connive because the Alpine Moon is going to shut down those sagas <laughs> yeah. anyway. Because you don't need them anymore. Because there ain't no Saga tokens being made anymore. Yeah, and we saw the power of Saga in game one. Now we see the power of what happens when you bring in good answers to Urza Saga. All right, maybe playing a little fast. Dillingham doesn't attack either. Hmm. All right, well, back Max's way. Let's you get see. a look at this draw step. Is I see that... Seachrome, Canopy. Is that a Skrelv? Are they playing Skrelv now? No. Okay. He's got two Giver of Runes, no Skrelvs. Okay, we're going to pop this relic and draw. That's Found a Blacksmith black skill. skill yeah. well, there's no hammers. A bunch of Sigarda's aids and Blacksmith skills and no hammers. Oh, there's an Esper Sentinel. Okay. okay. Right. And with the drum, we can protect it from a removal spell, but already under quite a bit of pressure here with the Shadow and Shredder on the battlefield. All right. Let's go an iteration. And this is going to trigger the Sentinel, and we'll see if Dylan wants to pay he does. Top three. Finds. Finds a fetch. That's important, both for making another land drop and for getting the Shadow big to start pressuring Hirsch's life total. All right, and we're going to play the fetch and attack. If there was a play to be made, I have to imagine that he would have done that pre-combat because of the connive on the Ledger Shredder. So my guess, this is just kind of a play this. If you block or fetch, maybe just choosing not to fetch here before damage too. Okay. Doesn't want to grow the Death Shadow and he wants to protect his life total a little bit. The difference between 11 and 12 is hefty with that Esper Sentinel on the table. One hammer is lethal. Yeah, and that is one of the uh, awkward parts of playing this uh, Shadow deck is you do, by virtue of dealing yourself a bunch of damage to turn on Death Shadow, sometimes leave yourself vulnerable to your opponent stealing a game. <laughs> yeah. So you got to be very careful when you're playing this deck to make sure that you don't open any windows like that. All right. Let's see. Going to go for Giver of Runes here. That combined with Springleaf Drum can use Blacksmith Skill to protect a creature from removal. Also has, looks like Shadow Spear in hand, so we could play that in instant speed and equip it. We have a lifelink blocker. Looks like we're just going to hold up the Blacksmith Skill. Back Ham's way. I like the no fetch. I was thinking about it. I was like, that's a lot of damage you're leaving on the table, but... The one turn window of your opponent just being able to kill you with a two outer makes a lot of sense. And it's way more than that, too, because Stoneforge Mystic is lethal, too. Here comes another Ledger Shredder. Yeah. Death Shadow and Ledger come in. See if Max wants to do anything defensive. Just going to take it, I would guess. Yeah, he's got some life to play with. All right, now we're going to fetch. So we're going to be fetch shocking down to nine. And this is going to grow the Death Shadow to a 4-4, so we're going to crack for 6 damage. 
We'll see if we want to play anything uh, pre-damage to connive the Ledger Shredder, maybe do one extra. Maybe like a Lightning Bolt or a removal spell or something. Makes a little bit of sense. Looks like it is a Lightning Bolt. All right, let's see what the target is, and then we're going to do some conniving. Top card. This card's engine explosives. Interesting, given that Hirsch's Battlefield is four one-mana non-land permanents. Yeah, but you have a lot of one-mana permanents yourself, so... Yeah, with the Alpine Moon and the Shadow. All right, well, we're going to use Blacksmith Skill to protect, and the uh, Lightning Bolt is countered. Now we're tapped out because of the Esper Sentinel. So now we can give Esper Sentinel protection from blue. Hammer and Stoneforge Mystic are lethal off the top. Let's see if Max can find it. One draw. Found the hammer. That's going to be game. Give him business. Wow. Pro blue. No blocks. Kill you. Max takes it down 2 0. <laughs> Impressive stuff. Dylan Ham had him stretched thin on so many metrics, but the strength of Sigarda's aid with that hammer. Really, really powerful there. Yeah, that was uh that's one of those stolen games. And if you're ham, you gotta be thinking like, man, I, I thought I was playing carefully around it. Maybe I could have done something more, but you're also in a position where you do want to end the game quickly because there are if you don't end the game quickly, you open yourself up to different sequences of draws that are even harder to anticipate. I have the I have the moral of this story. It's get full information before you declare your attacks. Yeah. Always. Because maybe you leave another leave like the shadow. You leave back. shadow back so you don't die to the six outer. Yeah. No, yeah. Wanted probably wanted to go for that bolt pre-combat 